Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong. Welcome to the Back Office Teardown Lab. Today I have one of these, which as you can see is a digital thermometer. And the idea is you shove this end into a chicken and uh, it'll tell you the temperature, which is great. You can see it's got like a silicone over shield and that's kind of perished a bit. It's obviously a bit old. Now I've changed the battery in this, but when I turn it on, yeah doesn't seem to be want to stay on so just gonna have a quick look to see what's going on with that I'm just wiggling the battery around ah so you can see it come on briefly but then just sort of knock itself off not sure what's going on there so let's have a look that's all that's all we can do so I guess it's the problem with this is and I can see a little bit of rust is that it's one of those things that needs to be clean because it's going to be in shoved in meat and all various things so it's going to be need to be washed and I can tell from this sort of shield thing it comes in that it's pretty clean in there so it's definitely been looked after um, so that may well have just perished some of the internals have got some you know rusty bits going on somewhere so hopefully it'll be a nice simple fix because I'd quite like this to work I mean I know what you're saying. You're saying, look, just prong the battery things out because that's probably all it is. Yes, it could well be that just the battery contacts are a bit uh, springless. The springiness has been eroded out of them and they're not springing anymore. Right, how do I get into this booger? But yeah, but, you know, to conclude my train of thought there, I um, but I want to just look inside anyway, see if I can get inside. But that doesn't appear to be possible because... I think it's bloody glued. I mean, I'm, I'm proper glued. There's no way you can actually spludge into there because there's just no gap. Let's have another go here. There's no spludging gap. So I don't really want to break this. So I guess the only thing we're going to do is just try to sort of prying out the battery contacts. So that's the positive and that's the negative. It's quite a weird way it's sort of set up there. It's got like a sort of hole, like a polo mint. On. It's just not staying on. No matter how hard I hold the battery in there. So let's let's just assume this is dead now. We need to sort of we need to get in here with extreme prejudice so I do have a trick actually for cracking the glue bear with me jump cut. so the trick I wanted to show you relies on certain tools that are eluding me now however I do have a new set of said tools and those are cheapo vice grips so fortunately they come in several sizes for your needs um, if you haven't used a vice grip, I will show you how to use one. They're great, by the way. Just show you how to use a vice grip. So that's your vice grip, standard tool. This adjusts how far the jaw closes or opens, depending on which way you're looking at it. So if you get something like this screwdriver, imagine you wanted to twist this screwdriver. You can see I, can, oh, I can't squeeze that. No matter how hard I squeeze, I'm never going to be able to squeeze enough for that to shut. So what I need to do is loosen that, and eventually there'll be a point where it will just clip on. And it clips on uh, like a vice. It bites on very tenaciously. And that's why you've got this lever here that you adjust. You click the lever actually and just to let it lock. I said adjust, but that's the wrong word. So you adjust this to make it a bit bitey. If you need it more bitey, just keep twisting it like that and locking it down. Eventually there'll be a point where, see it only just locks? That's crazy tight on there. So the way uh, you can use this though for opening certain things, I'm gonna take the big one for this. Uh, this is also, by the way, the technique for removing tungsten carbide rings. You basically open the drawer out as much as you can for your object. So I'm going to go for this face here. That's too much. So then I'm just going to keep loosening it. You want it just to be able, that when you crank this, it'll, in a very controlled way, we'll just, see like that? So it bit on in a very controlled way. Now if I just keep turning that now, like, half a turn at a time and just keep repeating there'll come a point where this will actually split the plastic and it's almost there now so I'm just going to do another maybe quarter turn a bit more oh I can definitely hear some crunchage going on 
let's just have a look, see how that's done. Yep, there's definitely a split now. You can see, you can pretty much get a spludger in there now if you have to, indeed. Spludger will go in there. But what I want to do though is work my way around this a little bit. And because it's this weird shape, I'm going to have to open the vice grip out again in the belly. Otherwise, it's going to be way too much, too much bite. So let's loosen that bit. Loosen it a bit more. can hear it creaking, but it's a bit too much. Ah, there you go. You can hear all sorts of plastic uh, noises there. A bit more now on the other end. So that's working my way down. So I'm hoping, and generally what it does do, it splits the glue. So you can see, oh yeah, look. We're almost there now. You can see that splitting right open. So a couple more bites here should be okay. And if we're lucky, it won't actually damage it too much. So that way, if it is uh, salvageable, you know, we can sort of glue those two bits of shell back on and you've got something that you can use. Maybe you might not want to use it in the kitchen anymore because it's not so pretty, but you could certainly find a use for it like on a barbecue where if it falls in, it's not such a disaster because it's something you bought, brought back from the brink of death anyway. So I'm gonna work that now because I've, you know, I've done my little crunching. So let's see if, there's a, if it's workable. It sort of is, but I think I need a firmer, firmer spludger. Let's just try again, keep going around. They really did not want anybody getting into this thing, that's for sure. Right, we're there. Let's zoom in and have a look. I've just sort of reminded myself that it's time to change the lens on my camera back to the original zoom lens. And that's it. There's our circuit board. And there's a whole bunch of funk on there. Look at that stuff. That is certainly not helping our cause in getting this working. So there's the thermocouple probe, sort of wired in directly to where this R2 would be. It's quite a nice shaped PCB. I wasn't really expecting a shaped PCB like that. Scalloped for your pleasure. But yeah, it's really rusty and filthy. Oh, there's another screw. Somehow managed to miss it. Come on, boy. Oh, there's another screw hiding. But that's a really rusty one. Looks like, yeah, it will come out, but that was borderline, that one. I wonder if this has been through a dishwasher. That's my gut feeling that it's just had a little bath. Had a little bath. Um, yeah, some crud on there. Not a massive amount, but main amount of cruddage is on the back of the PCB. So I'm going to just keep this PCB out and just get my spray stuff. Spray stuff and a bit of tissue. I really ought to keep this nearer this bench. It's funny how you uh, just go about doing your same old thing, same old routine, you know. I need to do uh, some PCB cleaning. I'll walk across the bench to the, sorry, to the other bench every single time rather than just move a tape dispenser locally. And the problem is you just don't think about it. I could move it, oh, I just broke the wire. I could move this tape dispenser over here. Um, say tape dispenser, of course, I mean blue roll dispenser. Same sort of, same sort of trick comes off a roll, like tape. Um, but yeah, you just don't, it's weird. And it, sometimes someone will just point it out to you or will just do it for you. And then you'll go, wow, you've revolutionized our uh, op whole operation here. We're so much more efficient. We've, you know, we're get, getting all these gains in productivity. And it's just because you had a third party um, come out and tell you what you really ought to have known better. And uh, we call those in the trader consultant. That's what it's all about, kids. Right. Let's solder this wire. Ah, catastrophe. Let's solder this wire back on. Try to figure out where to keep my fox clean. So it's about time I have a bloody clean out here. It's just getting far too crazy. And uh, I'm trying to avoid putting my head in shot. If, uh, I know now for some sort of close work, if my hair is, I had a haircut by the way, so it might not happen so much, but my hair is sort of quite fluffy and uh, I would lean in and you'd get to see my hair in the uh, shot. And uh, when I review the footage, 
I see that and I go, bollocks. But there's really nothing I can do at that point, apart from now being very conscious about it and trying not to do it. Come on. Oh, it's like it's kind of working even less than it was working. Dag, nam it. So, pretty crap. So what I'm going to do, I think it's fit for experimentation. So yeah, thanks for watching up to this point of uh, this complete failure. I'm going to keep this battery there. That battery is a good, good battery. So let's work out what's trash and what's not here. This is going to be trash. The whole thing is going to be trash. I'm actually going to just remove the probe wires. I want the probe. That's basically all I want out of this. And that's it, the probe. The rest we'll just chuck in the bin. Hmm, I'm just trying to think, is this useful, this probe? <laughs> probe container, like a probe sheaf. So maybe I can put a handle on this. I'll pull it from my sheaf. <clears throat> like a proper shiv, that is. Right, now, let's experiment. Let's commence our experimentation. So we've got our, whatever we want to call that, our foodage probe, which is no longer going to be used probably in foodage. And I'm just rubbing this wire, it seems, just to try to get some of the stuff off it. Great. So I've got my soldering iron on, and I'm going to leave it rather dangerously here, pointing at me. It might not look like it, but I can assure you it's not touching the bench. It does look like it's touching the bench in the video. So I've got the meter here on the resistance range, and uh, hopefully my holding it, it's not in the mega thing, I'm holding these, won't affect it too much. So 123 kilo ohms, so I'm going to put it on, it's touching. Ooh, its resistance is going down. I'm going to blow on it. Still seems to be going down, right? Why is that? It's not particularly hot when I touch it. Hmm. Let's try that again then. So the soldering iron is on. I'm going to touch it onto there. Yeah. I'm not sure what the range is on these things. Is it possible? Is it feasible that I've just cooked it? Could I have just somehow knackered it by touching it on a 340 degree soldering iron tip? Surely 340 degrees is what you expect in an oven. No, it definitely does something when you, you uh, hold it. It's like its resistivity actually goes down, doesn't it? But then when I take it off, what happens? Yeah, it's going back up. So maybe it just took time to stabilise. But I thought it said 150k when we were touching this to start with, but no, clearly that's kind of erroneous. So that's it. It gets hot, resistance goes down, it warms up. Sorry. <laughs> it cools down, the resistance should be going up. So if you build this into a circuit though, you need to calibrate it. So I'd get some sort of uh, infrared or whatever you've got, basically temperature thing, and uh, see where it gets to at room temperature. See where it gets to at say 100 degrees, see where it gets to at 200 degrees, and you've got some sort of calibration curve you can program into it. So there, that's it. Hope that's used to you. That's basically, ow, that's hot. Turn off that bloody soldering iron. That's a thermistor effectively, like a variable resistor that's temperature sensitive. Shame we couldn't get it working, but I'm guessing if I go on eBay, these things are like a couple of quid. If you've got one uh, that's of any use that you don't use it, maybe consider sending it to me. <laughs> As ever, guys, thank you for watching. Oh, and uh, I've been told I would really ought to tell people about it, um, but I do have a Patreon page, and uh, feel free to have a, a little look-see on that, and um, maybe if you're that way inclined, buy me a coffee. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>